what is cancer? In this short video, I will try to cover some basic concepts. Cancer is a diverse class of diseases which differ widely in their causes and biology. However, there are some common features which are shared by almost all cancers. So in this particular video, I will try to cover those. It is a complex disease characterized by deregulation of cell proliferation and apoptotic mechanisms, stromal and microenvironmental changes, angiogenesis, and eventually metastasis, which means the cells spread to distant sites. Nearly all known cancers arise gradually as errors build up in the cancer cell and its progeny. In this series of lectures, I'll be covering the biology of cancer, looking at how it develops at the cellular level and what are the different uh, steps of carcinogenesis. We will look at some causative factors, which are genetics and environmental factors. Uh, we look at how cancer presents and how it spreads, looking at staging of cancer. And towards the end, we will look at some basic principles of cancer management. Now, before we dive deeper into the pathophysiology and biology of cancer, let's look at cancer incidence and other stats in Australia. This data is from 2021. Three in every 10 deaths in Australia in 2020 were due to cancer. One in nine hospitalizations were related to cancer. 49,200 people were estimated to die from cancer in 2021. After adjusting for competing mortality, one in six men and one in seven women will die from cancer by the age of 85. Almost half of the national cancer burden is attributable to risk factors such as smoking, overweight, and ultraviolet radiation exposure. Now let's look at a normal tissue and try to figure out what happens that causes development of cancer. Now normally in a tissue, cells are living happily together, but sometimes some cells die. It could be an internal reason, it could be an external factor, whatever the cause is, some cells die. When that happens, the neighboring cells start to divide and they replace the dead cells. Okay, so basically a normal tissue, the cell death is equal to the cell development or cell growth. And this process of cell division, where one cell divides into two, is also known as cell cycle. Now this cell cycle is a multi-step process and cells will pass through an ordered series of events in which the cell will duplicate its DNA and then divide into two cells. As the whole DNA has to be duplicated without any error, this process must be highly ordered and tightly regulated. Okay, now there are certain checkpoints along the phases of cell cycle. So between G1 and S, G2 and the mitotic phase, I'll only mention a few of those. So there is one G1 checkpoint, there's one at G2, and there is one at metaphase. Now these checkpoints will allow cells to monitor how it is progressing through different phases. For example, G1 checkpoint will make sure that the cell is big enough, there are enough nutrients available, is the environment favorable for the process to go ahead. At G2 checkpoint, again, is the cell big enough, there's enough nutrition, is environment favorable, plus is all DNA replicated and replicated without any error. At metaphase checkpoint, the the cell will check whether all chromosomes are aligned on the spindle before they separate and go into two daughter cells. What happens if these checkpoints fail? Now this is what happens in cancers. As a result, the cells keep on dividing even though there are errors in the DNA even though there are other issues, even though there is lack of nutrients, the cells will keep on dividing. 
If we compare normal cells with cancer cells, normal cells have predictable orderly growth. Cancer cells have uncontrolled disorderly growth. Normal cells mature with specialized functions. Cancer cells will develop abnormally and fail to perform specialized functions. Normal cell in a normal tissue, cell production equals cell death. But in a cancerous tissue, cell production is more than cell death. So the tissue becomes bigger. What else? The cells cease to grow when they come in contact with other cells. That is normal. But in a cancer tissue, the cells lose this feature of contact inhibition and they grow outside tissue boundaries. So if you look at a group of cells here, the cells at the bottom are normal cells and you see these few cells which have grown bigger than the usual size and they're looking abnormal. These are cancer cells. What happens when they keep on growing and they don't follow the rules? They start secreting certain chemicals which allow blood vessels to grow towards these cells. And as you can imagine, these cells are growing without any control. They need much more oxygen. They need much more nutrients. That isn't the reason why they secrete these chemicals. So blood vessels will grow around these cells so they can then suck all the nutrients from the blood. When these cells continue growing, eventually they invade the tissue completely. They reach one of the major blood vessels. Once in the blood vessel, they can travel to distant sites and establish new colonies there. This process is known as metastasis. This can happen through blood vessels, can also happen through lymphatic channels. And this process of development of a cancer cell from a normal cell is not a simple process. It is a multi-step process. It takes sometimes years to develop. So if you look at the very left side of the figure, you see that little green cell. So this cell has become cancerous and it starts to divide and grow into a little mass. This mass initially is a benign mass. These cells grow only locally. They do not usually spread to distant sites. There are accumulation of mutations. There could be a mutation that inactivates tumor suppressor genes, followed by unlimited cell proliferation. At one stage, there are other mutations that inactivate DNA repair genes. So cells keep on growing and now they are also accumulating DNA errors. Then you can have activation of proto-oncogenes. So they become oncogenes and they cause now further havoc and the cells continue to grow and grow and grow. And eventually there is a change which causes these cells to now invade the local blood vessels, enter into the bloodstream or lymphatic channels and spread to distant sites. So this whole process, as I said earlier, may take up to years to complete. I've mentioned two terms here benign and malignant. So we can actually divide cancer cells into two types, benign and malignant. So benign tumors are tumors which grow slowly. Malignant tumors grow rapidly. Benign tumors usually have a well-defined capsule, so they will not go beyond that limit. But malignant tumors are not encapsulated, so they can grow into the surrounding tissues. Benign tumors usually are not invasive. Malignant tumors are invasive. Benign tumors, if you look at the cells under the microscope, they are usually well differentiated, which means they look like the cells from which they originated. But in case of malignant cells, they become poorly differentiated. There is usually low mitotic index when you look at these cells under the microscope. Well, in case of malignant tumors, there is high mitotic index. Benign tumors do not metastasize. This mass can grow locally. It can become very big in size, but usually it won't metastasize. But malignant tumors usually metastasize. So they will establish satellite colonies and grow in distant tissues and organs. So basically, what happens when a cell goes rogue? So these cells basically start 
breaking the rules. And the body does have mechanisms to deal with cells that are abnormal, which means that these cells that carry a genetic mutation, okay, uh, or genetic errors, these cells usually commit suicide. They undergo apoptosis, which is a programmed cell death, or they are killed by the immune system. In order to become a cancer, these abnormal cells have to multiply countless times and it takes a long time for a single cell to develop billions of daughter cells and this is why cancers generally grow over a long period of time. Now what is apoptosis? This is a programmed cell death. There are several pathways for induction of apoptosis. For example, internal cell stresses can lead to apoptosis via the cell's own mitochondria and signals from outside can also induce apoptosis. If a cell gets infected by viruses, it will try to induce apoptosis. Ionizing radiation, cytotoxic T cells, all of these can also induce apoptosis. Apoptosis usually is a physiological process, so it happens normally. Cells which are damaged beyond repair they will commit suicide. Uh, during embryogenesis, a lot of apoptosis happens. So it is basically a physiological process, but it can be pathological as well. If there is too much apoptosis, what would happen? Let me give you an example. Alzheimer's disease, you lose neurons. What if there is too little apoptosis? Example is cancer. All right, so cells do not die and they keep on growing, even though they are acquiring errors in their DNA. So after looking at all these features of cancer cells, we can now summarize the hallmarks of cancer cells. Okay, they resist cell death. They have sustained proliferative signaling. They evade growth suppressors. They activate invasion and metastasis and they have replicative immortality. So these cells basically become immortal. They secrete chemicals that will cause blood vessels to grow near the tumor cells. There are a few newer hallmarks of cancer identified. So the emerging hallmarks are deregulating cellular energetics and avoiding immune destruction. There are two enabling characteristics of cancer cells. One is genomic instability and mutations, and the other one is tumor promoting inflammation. So these are the hallmarks of cancer. Now what causes cancer? What causes this whole thing to begin in the very first place? There is a complex interplay of genetic and environmental factors. So you have genes which make cells prone to develop cancers, but then there is insult from the environment in the form of chemicals, viruses, and radiation. Let's look at the genes first. There is a group of genes called proto-oncogenes. These genes normally cause the cells to grow. What happens if these cells become mutated or overexpressed? In a normal cell, the cell will grow, but then eventually it will stop. When these genes become mutated or overexpressed, they will cause the cell to keep on growing. So once they become mutated, they are called oncogenes. There's another set of genes which are called tumor suppressor genes. These genes normally are like brakes. The previous one was the accelerator. These genes are like a brake. So they try to control cell growth. When these genes get inactivated, the cell will continue to grow as What about other factors? Let's look at some chemicals. There are chemicals which are found in different occupations or workplace, which can cause different types of cancer. For example, arsenic, asbestos, benzene, chromium, leather dust, and so on. They're found in different occupations and different types of cancers can be caused by these chemicals. You don't have to go too far to get exposed to chemicals. Tobacco use is associated with increased risk of cancers of the lung, mouth, and esophagus. Alcohol is linked with increased rates of incidence of oral cancer, cancer of the pharynx, larynx, esophagus, and liver. And alcohol consumption has also been linked to breast cancer and colorectal cancer. 
diet, what we eat. You know, many toxic, mutagenic, and carcinogenic chemicals can be found in the human diet, notably the preservatives and food colors. What about viruses? There are certain viruses which are linked with cancers, for example, Epstein-Barr virus linked to Burkitt's lymphoma, human papilloma virus linked to cervical cancer, Hep B virus linked to liver cancer, and so on. What about radiation? Two types, ultraviolet radiation found in sunlight and ionizing radiation. Ultraviolet radiation can cause basal cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma. These are two common cancers that are found in people who have pale skin with a light complexion. Now, this type of radiation causes mutations in two tumor suppressor genes. In addition, the very malignant pigmented moles known as melanoma are linked to the amount of exposure to UV light. What about ionizing radiation? You know, the list of carcinomas caused by ionizing radiation is extremely long. Some examples are shown here. In summary, cancer is a heterogeneous group of diseases with wide range of causative factors. Carcinogenesis is a multi-step process. However, there are some common hallmarks of cancer cells and understanding of these underlying processes can help devise better preventive measures and treatment for different types of cancers. All right, so please consult the references in order to develop a deeper understanding of the topic. We will cover the clinical features, the cancer staging, and treatment in the second part of the video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.